Hello, algebra students. Welcome back to another lesson. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being responsible. I hope that you've checked your email and all of the announcements on Google Classroom up to this point. Um, yes. All right, let's jump right into it. Uh, if last lesson was not bad for you, this lesson will also not be bad for you, so yay. Flipgrid question of the day is at that link. Go answer it if you enjoy those. They're good fun. Uh, you've already found the YouTube lesson if you're here now. Try this problem in your notes, this one right here. Pause the video, try that problem, unpause it, and do the problem with me. So we are told to graph the function and compare it to the graph of f of x. So, first thing I'm going to do is something like this. First thing I'm going to do is graph x squared. Because that's nice and easy, and I, I know how to do that. We have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And that's all we really need to graph x squared. That's not the prettiest graph. You, the important part is that it looks U-shaped. That's the important part. Okay. So there we go. We're going to compare it to the graph of x squared. Yes. Wonderful. So now this, this is the function that we are wanting to graph and that we're comparing to this function. So remember, I'm going to make my beautiful t table. Now, because we have negative, we have p of x is equal to negative 3x squared. Because that's negative 3, if that were a fraction, say that were negative 1 third, x squared, I would be taking multiples of 3 for my numbers over here. But because we don't have a fraction, I'm going to pick the smallest, easiest numbers to do. I'm going to pick negative 1, 0, and 1. All you need are 3 points. If you want to do more than 3 points, you can, but all you need is 3 points. So, we're going to do p of negative 1 is negative 3 times negative 1 squared which is negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. Remember, our axis of symmetry tells me that this is also going to be negative 3. No question about it. This is also going to be negative 3 because they're on the same side of our axis of symmetry down the middle. Now I have to do p of 0, negative 3, times 0 squared is negative 3 times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. Beautiful. So here's our first point. We have 0, 0, negative 1, 3, and 1, 3. Now connect the dots in a U-shaped form. So this is a very steep upside-down U like that. Okay. And when they say compare the graph to f of x, well, we notice that this one is turned upside down because of the negative right here, because of the negative here and here. That's why it turned upside down. And not only did it turn upside down, but it got skinnier. See how this one is like wider? x squared goes up kind of like this, and ours goes, woo, it goes much quicker. It goes down much quicker. So x squared, and then ours is steeper than x squared. x squared's out here and we're up here. So that is how it compares to the graph of, f of x squared. Wonderful! Awesome! That is the entry task. Let's move on to what we have for today. Today we move into 8.2, our learning target. I know what y equals ax squared plus c. So yesterday, or excuse me, last lesson we learned about ax squared now we tack on the plus c. So you should know what this looks like on a graph, and you should be able to graph it yourself. So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to graph y equals ax squared plus c. Now because all we're doing is tacking on the plus c, it's not so bad. It's really not so bad. I hope you think so too. Okay, so important information. You don't need to write this down, you just need to understand it in your brain. So, when c is greater than 0, 
So when this C is positive, the graph of f of x, ax squared plus c is a vertical translation. Ooh, those are big words. Vertical translation, c units up. What that means, what vertical translation means, is it goes up. So instead of your graph being here, now your graph goes up, and it goes up here. That's it. That's it. If C, if if we have plus 5, you're going to move that thing up 5 units. Ta-da! Yep, that's it. And if C is negative, so positive goes up, what do you think negative does? When C is less than 0, the graph of yada yada is a vertical translation C units down. So now our graph is here. Now we're going down. And the graph just goes down there. Uh, so if we had ax squared minus 5, we have gone down 5 units. We just took that and we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ta-da! The end. So, um... Vertical translation just means that you slide it around. You slide it up or down. That's what translation means. And we'll write that. I'm going to write that down. Translation. Slide around. In our case, slide up and down. Positive goes up. Negative goes down. Yep. Let's see some examples, shall we? First example, x squared minus 2. And compare it to the graph of x squared. Okay. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is make a t-table, because it helps. It helps me. So, x, y, that's a y. Now, because this is x squared, because I don't have a fraction there, I can use whatever numbers I want. And I think it's easy, easiest, to use negative 1, 0, and 1. So now, if I take g of negative 1, I get negative 1 squared minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. What do you think this number right here should be for 1? If negative 1 was negative 1, what do you think positive 1 should be? What should go here? Hmm. I'll let you think about that. Let's plug in 0. g of 0 equals 0 squared minus 2, which is 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. So 0 is negative 2. And now lastly, let's do g of 1. G of 1 is 1 squared minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, <gasps> which is negative 1. Would you look at that? They're the same. Oh my goodness. It's almost like I knew that would happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so negative 1, let's plot that point first. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2. And 1 negative 1. Beautiful. So there. That, the right side looks much better. Let's... There we go. Better. Okay. Now don't forget that they wanted us to compare it to the graph of x squared. So normal x squared, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1. And there you have it. So that, this is the graph of x squared, and this is the graph of x squared minus 2. So when they tell us to, let's get a different color. When they tell us to compare, what we look for is how are they the same, how are they different. These graphs are the same. This is the exact same graph. 
and you can kind of see it here. We didn't graph a ton of points, but you can see that this graph and this graph are the same, except um, the red one went down two, down two units. So when they ask you to compare the graph, you're seeing how are they the same, how are they different? They're the same graph. The only difference is that they're two units apart. So that's that's the compare piece of it. Cool. Cool. So the table is still the same. We're going to be using tables today, next lesson, last lesson. Uh, so the table won't go away. Um, but you can kind of see how it's the same graph. It's the same graph as this one, and we just moved it down two units. So yeah, so that'll help you check and make sure your table's correct. Let's see if we were right. Oh, booyah, we were right. They did an extra two. They did negative two and two. Remember, you only have to do three for my class. If you want to do more, that's great. Okay. Second example, last example for today, graph this g of x equals 4x squared plus 1. What do you think, before we even graph it, what do you think this is going to look like? Remember, how did the graph change when I went from x squared to ax squared? Remember, the graph either got wider or it got skinnier. So if we have a 4 in front of here, do you think it's going to get wider or do you think it's going to get skinnier? And... Since we have this plus one here, I know that that either moves it up or down. One of those two. So what do you think the graph is going to look like before we even graph it? Do you think it's going to be something like this? Do you think it's going to be something like this? Where? I want you to make a guess before we even start. And then you can see if you were right uh, after we're done. And then you can brag to all your classmates that you got it right. Okay. So first thing let's do is let's graph good old x squared so that we know what we're comparing it to. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Oh, but wait a minute. We're counting by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8. So we got to be careful here. That was 2. But this is 1. Oh, this is a funky graph. Okay, that's all right. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. I think that's good enough. Connect the dot. If that went too fast for you, you need to watch yesterday's lesson. Or not yesterday's, but last lesson. You need to watch 8.1's lesson. Because we went through it a lot slower in that lesson. Okay. Next, let's graph you. I am going to use, because there's no fraction here, I think it's easiest to just negative 1, 0, and 1. So now let's do g of negative 1. That's 4 times negative 1 squared plus 1. 4 times negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1. So this is 4 plus 1, which is 5. So what do you think this is going to be? What do you think? Just saying. G of 0. We're doing this one right here. G of 0. 4 times 0 squared plus 1. This is 4 times 0 plus 1. 4 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. And now G of 1. So now we'll do this guy right here. G of 1 is 4 times 1 squared plus 1, which is 4 times 1 squared is 1 plus 1. So this is 4 plus 1, which is 5. Oh my goodness, y'all, it happened again. It happened again. And it's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen every time today. Every time last lesson, every time today. Because our line of symmetry is right down the middle. Anytime you just have ax squared or ax squared plus c, 
your line of symmetry is right down the middle. Okie dokie. So now let's graph these points. We're going to graph all three of these points right here. Negative 1, 5. Now don't forget that um, these are counting by 2s. So this is 4 and this is 6. So 5 is kind of in the middle there. 0, 1. That puts it right there. Because again, we're counting by 2s. And then 1, 5. Beautiful. And now let's connect the dots. Oh, that was a little funky. Perfect. There we go. And this is 4x squared plus 1. So what do you notice? Let's get a different color. When we compare, what are we noticing? I'm noticing that it's skinnier. It's definitely skinnier. Look at this one out here and look at this one in here. So it's it's skinnier. And we call that horizontally compressed or vertically stretched. Those are the fancy words. Uh, but I'm noticing that it's steeper. And I'm noticing that it went up. See that right there? It went up one. Okay, so it's steeper and it moved up one unit. Ta-da! Yes, hands. Okay, yeah. There you have it. Make your table. Plug your numbers in where you need to. Graph. Graph f of x squared. Graph this. Compare them. And there you go. You're done. Alright. Let's check and make sure we were right. Oh, look at that. We were right. Okay. Questions. Questions. Remember that if you have questions, our Google Meets are now live tutoring sessions, basically. They are office hours. So anytime, Tuesday through Friday, from 12.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. is office hours. Free tutoring, one-on-one, -on -one, or however many people are there, where you can come and ask questions, and I will answer any and every question you have. I want to help you, um, so please ask questions. You can be happy like this lady here. Okay, your homework only has eight questions on it. Four like the first one, four like the second one. And your launch for today comes from Michael Altschuler. And it says, the bad news is, time flies. The good news is, you're the pilot. What does that mean? What does that mean, Mrs. Dodge? Well, time flies. Sometimes it goes by too quickly. And you might see that as a bad thing. Like, there's never enough time in the day. I don't get to hang out with my friends as much as I want. I don't get to practice this hobby that I love as much as I want. I, there's too much schoolwork and not enough... Uh, not enough photography, or whatever it might be. So that's the bad news. But the good news is, you're the pilot. Time flies, but you're the pilot. So you get to steer your time in the direction that you want it to go. If you think you're spending way too much time uh, watching Instagram videos, or TikToks, or whatever you call them, um, you get to change that. You can steer yourself away from scrolling through Instagram for four hours, and you can spend that time on something that you'd rather be doing. Uh, spending time with family, spending time with friends, uh, making sure you get a good education so you can get a good job and take care of your family in the future. You get to decide how you spend your time. So when you say like, oh, time flies, there's not enough time, it just goes by too fast, you get to decide how you pilot that time. So making a schedule helps with that. And we created a YouTube video about how to make a schedule. So check that out. Last announcement that we had. And yeah, there's your launch. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. 
And if you need anything, please, please come to my office hours. I am more than happy to help you. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.